Narasi, mengapa begitu banyak firman Tuhan mengenai ayat-ayat kesembuhan dan pemulihan dalam kitab suci Alkitab sebagai aplikasi setiap manusia selama menjalankan hidup dalam dunia? Seorang timur tengah bernama Nasir Sidik bergaris keturunan langsung dari sang pionir Islam Abu Bakar Sidik. Nasir Sidik bertobat terima Yesus sebagai Tuhan dan Juru Selamat. Moyangnya, Abu Bakar Sidik yang sangat terkenal dalam sejarah peradaban Islam sampai hari ini. Abu Bakar Sidik adalah sahabat terbaik dan terdekat daripada Nabi Muhammad SAW. Abu Bakar Sidik sangat-sangat dihormati karena merupakan khalifah pertama sejak nenek moyang Islam berkembang sampai hari ini. Khalifah Abu Bakar Sidik sangat-sangat luar biasa mempengaruhi sejarah dunia, seperti dilansir dari video. Suatu saat pada usia sangat muda 35 tahun penganut Islam sangat taat turun temurun Nasir Sidik ini telah menjadi seorang jutawan kaya raya. Alkisah tiba-tiba Sidik menderita suatu penyakit aneh sangat mengerikan dan mematikan. Hanya dalam waktu 18 jam antibodi tubuhnya terdegradasi sampai ke level 0. Tak ada sama sekali pertahanan tubuh melawan penyakit sekecil apapun. Tubuhnya akan rontok ambruk lebur dalam hitungan hari. Malaikat maut yaitu kematian dipastikan akan menjemputnya dalam waktu sangat dekat. Para dokter ahli medis dunia dan obat-obatan tak berdaya menyembuhkannya. Hanya Tuhan Yesus yang sangat mampu memulihkannya. Nasir Sidik sangat beruntung sebab Tuhan Yesus mau menjamah dan menyembuhkannya. Mari kita tonton kisah yang menjadi trending topik di Amerika Serikat dan belahan dunia lainnya setelah dipublish oleh TV, It's Supranatural. Kesaksian hidup ini merupakan penggenapan firman dalam kitab suci Alkitab yang berbunyi. Keluaran 15 ayat 26. Firmannya, jika kamu sungguh-sungguh mendengarkan suara Tuhan, Allahmu, dan melakukan apa yang benar di matanya, dan memasang telingamu kepada perintah-perintahnya dan tetap mengikuti segala ketetapannya, maka aku tidak akan menimpakan kepadamu penyakit manapun, yang telah kutimpakan kepada orang Mesir, Sebab aku Tuhanlah yang menyembuhkan engkau. Ulangan 32 ayat 39. Lihatlah sekarang, bahwa aku, akulah dia, tidak ada Allah kecuali aku. Akulah yang mematikan dan yang menghidupkan. Aku telah meremukkan, tetapi akulah yang menyembuhkan. Dan seorang pun tidak ada yang dapat melepaskan dari tanganku. Mazmur 30 ayat 2. Tuhan, Allahku, kepadamu aku berteriak minta tolong. Dan engkau telah menyembuhkan aku. Yesaya 19 ayat 22. Tuhan akan menghajar orang Mesir. Akan menghajar dan menyembuhkan. Dan mereka akan berbalik kepada Tuhan dan ia akan mengabulkan doa mereka serta menyembuhkan mereka. Yeremia 33 ayat 6. Sesungguhnya, aku akan mendatangkan kepada mereka kesehatan dan kesembuhan. Dan aku akan menyembuhkan mereka dan akan menyingkapkan kepada mereka kesejahteraan dan keamanan yang berlimpah-limpah. Matius 4 ayat 24. Maka tersiarlah berita tentang dia di seluruh Syria dan dibawalah kepadanya semua orang yang buruk keadaannya. Yang menderita pelbagai penyakit dan sengsara. Yang kerasukan, yang sakit ayan dan yang lumpuh. Lalu Yesus menyembuhkan mereka. Matius 14 ayat 14. Ketika Yesus mendarat, ia melihat orang banyak yang besar jumlahnya. Maka tergeraklah hatinya oleh belas kasihan kepada mereka dan ia menyembuhkan mereka yang sakit. Matius 15 ayat 30 Kemudian orang banyak berbondong-bondong datang kepadanya membawa orang lumpuh, orang timpang, orang buta, orang bisu dan banyak lagi yang lain. Lalu meletakkan mereka pada kaki Yesus dan ia menyembuhkan mereka semuanya. Markus 3 ayat 10, sebab ia menyembuhkan banyak orang, sehingga semua penderita penyakit berdesak-desakan kepadanya hendak menjamahnya. Lukas 4 ayat 40, ketika matahari terbenam, semua orang membawa kepadanya orang-orang sakitnya, yang menderita bermacam-macam penyakit, ia pun meletakkan tangannya atas mereka masing-masing dan menyembuhkan mereka. Lukas 7 ayat 21, pada saat itu Yesus menyembuhkan banyak orang dari segala penyakit dan penderitaan dan dari roh-roh jahat dan ia mengaruniakan penglihatan kepada banyak orang buta. Lukas 9 ayat 1 Maka Yesus memanggil kedua belas muridnya, lalu memberikan tenaga dan kuasa kepada mereka untuk menguasai setan-setan dan untuk menyembuhkan penyakit-penyakit.
Lukas 9 ayat 2, dan ia mengutus mereka untuk memberitakan kerajaan Allah dan untuk menyembuhkan orang. Lukas 9 ayat 6, lalu pergilah mereka dan mereka mengelilingi segala desa sambil memberitakan Injil dan menyembuhkan orang sakit di segala tempat. Lukas 14 ayat 4b, lalu ia memegang tangan orang sakit itu dan menyembuhkannya dan menyuruhnya pergi. Yohanes 5 ayat 11, akan tetapi ia menjawab mereka, orang yang telah menyembuhkan aku, dia yang mengatakan kepadaku, angkatlah tilammu dan berjalanlah. Kisah para Rasul 9 ayat 34, kata Petrus kepadanya, Eneas, Yesus Kristus menyembuhkan engkau, bangunlah dan bereskanlah tempat tidurmu, seketika itu juga bangunlah orang itu. Selamat datang di channel Sola Scriptura, channelnya kesaksian hidup Kristen menyembuhkan dalam nama Yesus. Jangan lupa subscribe, like, komen, dan share. Tuhan Yesus memberkati. Amin. Catatan. Mohon maaf jika ada kekeliruan penyebutan nama, titel dan sebutan lain. Uh, I'm, I'm with a very interesting person. His ancestor was the best friend of Muhammad and he was the first caliph of the entire Muslim world. Is that right, Nasser Siddiqui? That is absolutely right. Th that's quite a genealogy that you yes. have. Yes, that's why the name Siddiq is synonymous with Abu Bakr Siddiq, the first caliph of the uh, Muslim nation. So, out of curiosity, would most Muslims recognize your last name? Absolutely, absolutely. If I was to go to the Middle East, they would immediately recognize Nasser Siddiq. He's family from the Siddiqs. And uh, speaking of family, he came from a very prosperous family, but uh, he didn't do so bad himself. By 35, he was a millionaire. He had all the neatest cars and homes and everything Hollywood says they'll make you happy. But you know what? He developed a deadly disease. Tell me about that, Nasser. Um, I got very sick, and it started off with blisters on the side of my neck. And by the morning, it had grown to blisters half an inch, half inch in size on the side of my. This head. isn't supposed to happen to you. Everything, no. no. But of course, you were working about 18 hours 18 a day, hours a and day. You, so your immune system was ripped. Yes. Down, down zero, minus zero. They they rushed me to hospital. I had passed out twice that night. They rushed me to hospital, uh, Toronto General Hospital in Toronto, Canada, in the emergency section. They diagnosed it as the worst case of shingles ever recorded in the history. I was in so. But wait a second. I had shingles and I was in pain, but that wasn't, I, I couldn't die from it. <laughs> well, this one was from the top of my head all the way down here, all the way down the side of my face, this ear, this neck, this shoulder. Uh, they admitted me to hospital. The next morning, this ear was touching this shoulder. It was like a balloon. I looked like a leper, deformed on this side. And my immune system was not fighting back. Now, do you have a picture of that? Would yes, you show yes, us that? absolutely. This is what I look like uh, in that hospital room. Mm. Blisters one inch in size, chicken pox, temperature 107.6, and brain damage. In this condition, with hypothermia, they left me to die. Well, the doctors actually came into the hospital, yes. standing over your bed. Yes. They think you're out of it, you're sleeping. Yes. What did you hear them say? They examined me and they said this, his immune system has shut down, this is spreading across his body, uh, we can't do anything about the hypothermia because the brain had cooked itself and they said I would probably be dead by the morning. In fact, Anita, they took her out of the room afterwards and explained to her that A, if I lived, this, this, is, I would this, be this is someone that worked with you. Yes, I, my eye would be blind, my ear deaf, th there's brain damage, this side of the face would be paralyzed, and if I lived, I would be a vegetable, but probably I would be dead by the morning. Okay, you hear this horrible report. Yes. Uh, you're a Muslim. Yes. Uh, did you prepare? What, what does a Muslim think when he gets a death sentence? Like, um, the Allah is not a healer, uh, Muhammad is not a healer, so we don't turn to Allah to heal us. We assume that we're going to die. But I was afraid of death, Sid. I was petrified of Why? death. Why? I didn't know what was on the other side, but Why? I was afraid of it. And the very people that I had my faith in, my trust in, were those doctors. And they had just given up. What do you do when the people you got your trust in have given up on you and left you to die? In, in, 
in fear, I cried out. I said, God, if you're real, don't let me die. That's what I cried out. Mohammed didn't come, Allah didn't come, but that night, that night, in that room, there appeared a figure at the end of the bed. And this person... Wait, wait, wait a second. Had you ever seen something supernatural like this before in your no. entire life? Never. This is the, your first time? Yes. Okay. Now, now there's this figure. Yes. And uh, are you scared? Are you, what's going on? No, I mean, no, this? not at all. I okay. wasn't scared at all. I, in the middle of the night, I see this figure at the end of the bed, and it was the outline of a person with light radiating from them. Hmm. I couldn't tell you the way the face looked, but all I could see was this outline of a person with light. Now, I knew it was Jesus. These people come to me and they say, but you're a Muslim. Muslims don't know Jesus. Oh, yes, they do. If you read the Quran, Jesus is mentioned many times as a good man, as a healer, as a prophet. Even his birth is mentioned and that he healed people. But, but the main thing I understand about Islam, uh, they say God has no son. That's I mean, exactly. look at the mosque when they, they have it right on top in, in Jerusalem. <laughs> That's right. He has no son. Well, this person that appeared said two things. I am the God of the Christians. Mm -hmm. And I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Wait a second. As a Muslim, isn't it uh, Abraham, Ishmael, Ishmael that's and Jacob? Right. That's right. <laughs> Ishmael is supposed to be the firstborn, right. not Isaac. But that's not what this person said. Abraham, Isaac. So to me, it meant a whole lot. But even more astounding was that the next morning, the same doctors walked in and they said, we don't understand what's happened. It is a miracle. It has gone into remission. Instead of spreading, they are starting to decrease. Now, when they said that to you, what did you think? I, I, I said, look, I don't know what to tell you, but there was a, did you a tell person. Them? You I told them. Oh, they're going to put you in a mental <laughs> war. <laughs> <laughs> I told them, there was Jesus here and he healed me. And a said, Muslim no, no. saying that, they're going to put him away. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't believe me. And that became a test case in the city of Toronto. Why is this man alive? In fact, they said it's gone into remission so much, you can go home now. And I said, no, I don't want to go home. That was my Security. That little room was my security. You wanted that man to come back? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> they released me the next day. Now, the problem was that even though it had gone into remission, th my head still looked deformed. Right. And so when I would walk down the street, people would cross over the other side. They didn't know what was wrong with me. But what, I, what did you do with this man saying, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Well, Isaac! <laughs> I know. Yes, sir. I, I, it's like, <laughs> wait a minute. Uh, this doesn't make any sense. Uh, um, is this Jesus that appeared in my room, is he a prophet, the way the Muslims had taught me all my life, or is he the Son of God? Hold that the thought. Let's find yeah. out how God supernaturally shows Nassar that he's the Son of God. Jesus is the Son of God. It's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Don't go away. This is amazing. <laughs> We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Well, I said Roth here with Nasser Siddiqui, and Nasser is a, is a Muslim. Uh, he is literally dying of the worst case of shingles the hospital had ever seen. Uh, and a man comes in, he just intuitively knows that it's Jesus, and he's emanating such love, such light, uh, that healing begins to start in Nasser's body. The doctors don't understand it. They release him. He wasn't completely healed, but he, he, he went from no hope to being able to leave the hospital. But he had a problem because this man that visited him, Jesus, said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And if he knew one, one thing, he knew God has no son. But <laughs> That's what he said. Exactly so what, what did said. you do about that? I had that burning question. Is Jesus really the Son of God? And um, I got home that day, the day I, I was released from the hospital. The next morning I wake up at 6 o'clock. I don't know why I woke up at 6, turned on the television. There were two men just like here talking about that very question. And on the screen it says, is Jesus the Son of God? My goodness. Coincidence? <laughs> I don't think so. That was the very question that was in my heart. And they're talking back and forth. And they were talking about how God God sent his son to die on the cross for our sins because of his love for us. This now, as a Muslim, what did, what did this mean to you? It's so strange. Well, well as a Muslim, I was 
taught all my life that uh, to know that you're going to heaven, your good works have to exceed your bad works. And it's only through works. The only exception of that in Islam is called jihad. Jihad is when you die for your cause. You die for your God. And here I'm hearing these two men talk about not dying for your God, but your God dying for you. I'd never experienced that kind of love in my life. And I said, could this be true? Could it be true that God, the Father, sent Jesus, the Son, to pay the price for my sins, for everything that I've done wrong? This was, this was all new to me, but it was exciting. And these men were talking back and forth that yes, Jesus is the Son of God, and yes, it is documented that he walked the earth, and it is documented that he healed, and it is documented that he died on the cross and paid the price for the sins of all men. So what happened with this horrific disease that you had? Well, that day when that program finished, I got on my knees, they led me in a prayer, I asked Jesus to be the Lord of my life, I found a photograph of the way I used to look, and I started praying to this Jesus, can you make me look like this again? I had looked 75 years old, I had my whole face aged. Five days later, I woke up at five o'clock in the morning, the doctor said, don't scratch the blisters, they're contagious. But I saw some on my pillow, so I must have scratched them in the middle of the night. I got out of bed, stood under the shower, said for an hour and a half, every single blister from the top of my head, my face, my ear, my neck, my shoulder, fell. And the skin was red like raw meat. And the doctor said I would have white blotches. But as you can see, no. there's no blotches. So is there any doubt in your mind that God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that Jesus is his son. Any doubt? No doubt. I, I'll tell you. I have I'm, living proof. I, I'm sure of that. But what happens when your brother, who you love, who is a Muslim, dies and is in the morgue in another country? Yes. What happened to you? Yes. My brother was... Um, he died in Westminster Hospital in London, England. They took his body to the morgue. I got the phone call. My wife and I, we started praying because we know where he's going. We know exactly where he's going. And we started praying, praying, praying. And after several hours of prayer, I got the call that he came back to life in the morgue. I wonder what they thought. I mean, that's kind of big. Can you picture that scene? I, I mean, I can picture it. <laughs> and they brought him back to the uh, intensive care unit, and I flew to England, prayed and laid hands on him, and he came out of the coma, gave his life to Jesus, and described what he saw. Heaven is real, but said, hell is real. What, what did he see? He saw himself looking down on his body, and he saw the doctors trying to re revive his heart because his heart had stopped beating. Then they, he saw them give up and put, cover him with a sheet. They, he saw them looking down. They took his body into an elevator down to the basement to the morgue. Then he found himself falling in a very dark place. And there were uh, creatures there, ugly creatures. He was hard to describe because he was frightened with them. And then finally, as he was falling in this dark hole, he looked up and he saw a crucifix. And he, this is what he described to me. I said, you saw Jesus on the cross? He said, no, no, I saw myself on the cross. I said, what? He said, it was the most horrific thing I'd ever seen in my life. I don't ever want to see that again. I said, you deserve to be on the cross because the wages of sin are death unless you accept that Jesus went to the cross for your sins and he gave his life to Christ. Now, what did he think when he saw these creatures in this pit? He was petrified. He was absolutely petrified, terrified. He was full of fear. He didn't even want to talk about it, Sid. And when he talked about it, his eyes just grew big and it was like, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to think about this. Hell is real. Nasser said something very important. It doesn't matter whether you feel it or Come not. On. His brother saw hell. He was, saw this pit, these horrible monsters. And he made Jesus his Messiah. If this Muslim with such a substantial background could believe in Jesus, you could do that right now. You will if believe that Jesus died for your sins. Every bad thing you've ever done, he died for and tell them you're sorry for the bad things you've done. It's washed away, and you ask Jesus to come and live inside of you and be Lord of your life. If you'll do that now, you will know that you're going to heaven. You won't hope, you won't think, you will know. Knowing is much better than that.